have classes that are like XCIA, right? Like they're responsible for coaching police departments and I'm sitting right in front of them and I just smell like booze. I look and rough cocaine, and right? I'm like, it's like cocaine yeah, too, right? Yeah. 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 And then I'm acing these tests on all of this. Like I was living wow. the life that they were studying and everybody knew it. Like it's, you took one look at me and you're like, this guy is not like, what is he doing here? So I was like, all right. Um, so I try to make it work, try to fix it. And I just got to the point. I was like, nah. So I get back. She actually picks me up from the airport. And I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then tragedy strikes, right? So she takes me back home. I pack up my stuff. And I literally break up with the whole family at that night. Wow. Um, I get in my truck. And I'm <laughs> that's like, funny how that you say it that way. But yeah, I understand. Because you're living That's what it felt house. like. Because I had to go to like, each I, I person and say it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done. Dude, that, it was, Bye. it was, it was. It was a rough night, man. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be a physicist and I'll finish that sometime. Um, but I needed to switch to something easier. So I picked law. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's easy. You got it there. You got it there. So I picked, Perfect. So I picked Perfect. that with, the, with an emphasis in um, law enforcement, right? And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was to be a cop and I wanted to be an agent. So I picked all the professors and I connected well, with cool. professors that... Yeah. Right. Like I had yeah. one professor, he was, um, he knew the leaders of SEAL Team 6. So he was given the breakdown when the whole Osama bin Laden thing went I'm down. I'm trying to figure right. it out. I totally forgot we partied the night at a concert. I totally forgot that I consumed narcotics. Like I'm like trying to piece this together. Like how do you, how do I wake up in this state right here? Like how does yeah. that happen? Wow. Well then they, they come in and he starts telling me, well, dude, we lost you, the concert, this, and like, and then driving back from LA that night or that morning, I was dead quiet. I just remember I'm looking out the passenger window for five hours and I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, wow, I'm that guy. Like, how did I get here? Like, what, like, how did, what just over and over and over and over in my mind? I like, how, I like it. Yeah. So, um, it all kind of came down to responsibility and it wasn't my choice. Yeah. I didn't decide to make this happen. It, that's the Lord, the universe, God, Jesus. It, that's what made yeah. me happen. It put me in the weddings and I was doing weddings two or three times every single weekend. So I was yep. surrounded by love, positivity, the best night of people's lives, which is the complete opposite of kind of what I was used to, right? Yeah. Responsibility, running the show, making people laugh, you know, giving them one of the best nights of their life versus me forgetting my night with alcohol and drugs. People like yeah. Les Brown, Eric Thomas, Dick Ziegler, Jim Rohn, Bob Proctor, and literally listening to hours and hours and hours of all that work is also what helped shifted me out too. Yeah, it really does save you. Um, Cause like you, you mentioned this too, and I did, and it was the same with me, where I didn't have somebody that taught me about mindset, that taught me about mm -hmm. like energy, that taught me about like the way you, it, you know, put things in your environment unintentionally. Um, they yeah, work, I, they pay bills, they surface level relationships, they don't go deep with each other, you know, and, and being in the wedding industry, I'm sure you're aware, like, it's a very high divorce rate right now. You know, oh, it is. You know, it is even, it's, even I think it's over 50% now, right? Yeah, and that's, that was pre-COVID, I think. That was pre-COVID. And um, so everybody kind of forgets to go, like, to be human, to chase those dreams, that fire, that soul that they have, right? Now, you're, And you're talking about the aha moment. And it's very interesting because you can tell who's had it and who hasn't had it. You could tell it was my, uh, I guess my main source of income, but due to COVID, like the entire industry shut down. And I used oh, to think that I the- Oh, I see, okay. So it's, yeah. it's not been too long. It was like six months ago, I guess. Yeah, no, I actually retired from GM, oh man, it's two, like a month or two ago. Oh, really? I retired okay. from GM okay. position. And then I switched and I used my network marketing with Isogenics to be my main now. Okay. Um, and that's been a huge positive outlet is just growing on all fronts as a human being. But I still DJ on the side, like I love bringing people together. I love the power of music. It's something that transcends all social boundaries. Yes. Okay, so I'm actually writing three books right now. Okay. okay, so first book that I started, it's science fiction book. You know, my mom, she's a huge, bless that woman's heart. Huge Stephen King fan, I can't do horror though. That woman, like we're a little different. <laughs> but she grew me up on like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. 
So I started incorporating all my favorite stories and I put it into one and it's a total science fantasy. I love it. But that project's going to be finished later in life. But Dancing with Devils is a true, um, it's, a, it's, it's something special. And the reason why is because when I was going out of my period, how I went from zero income, drugs, and all that other fun stuff, homeless, to literally working with some of the top network marketing professionals in the entire country, international keynote speakers, mm -hmm. how I did that, I didn't have any professional help. I didn't see a therapist. I didn't go to rehab. I've had friends that even stopped person. hanging out with me. Though. Little third person view, but I always flip it back. So me, me, uh, when the reader is reading it, they're reading my mind talking to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds right. cool. Sounds really cool. Yeah. And then cool. I have a bunch of exercises throughout the entire book. So each chapter gives a breakdown of like social influence, you know, your energy, where you're spending it habits. And at the end of each chapter, I have an exercise that the person could do. It takes anywhere from like 15 minutes to an hour. So people can physically see what's going on before them. Cause yeah. when you can start seeing things and you write it out, that that's where the power is. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how to, how to be a wedding DJ, man. <laughs> ah, of course the past, you got to touch on the past too. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I've rocked. Uh, I think I, the last time I checked, I did like some 300 weddings in yeah. like five years, six years. So I just, I wrote down my whole playbook. Basically it's like a huge wedding playbook on who to talk to, what to say, scripts for the maid of honor, how to calm brides down, like the whole book, right? Wow, so yeah. So forth, whatever's yeah. in the history books and whatever people say, right? So when people attack you, when people do things, I've learned to not take it personally because you don't know what stage development that person's in. Maybe there's some form of demon trauma that they just, they don't even, they're not even aware of that's causing them to act out. Now, can we get disappointed and upset? I, of course, absolutely. We're human. We have emotions and things like that. Carbon cut copies of each other. So be human, breathe human, breathe humanity. Everybody, we all bleed the same blood. Don't take it too personally and pursue those dreams because you got something special inside you that's going to, that's going to impact somebody's life. Definitely.